Question 2 from Paper 2 of the 2024 Higher Physics Examination from the SQA. A car pulls a caravan up a slope at a constant speed of 4 metres per second. The slope is at an angle of 9.6 degrees to the horizontal. The car and passengers have a total mass of 1,650 kilograms and the caravan has a mass of 1,350 kilograms. So for three marks in part AI, we're asked to determine the component of the total weight of the car, passengers and caravan acting down the slope. Okay, here's our diagram here. And you can see we've got the total mass of the car, passengers and caravan amounts to 3,000 kilograms. That's going to be 1,250 kilograms plus the 1,650 kilograms. So we'll just bind it all into one box as shown. It's sitting in a slope of an angle 9.6 degrees and the component of weight acting down the slope, F parallel, is always given by the famous relationship formula Mg, and that's the weight part, sine of the angle of the slope, sine theta. So all we have to do is plug those numbers in. The component of the weight parallel to the slope is going to equal to the total mass, which could be 3,000, multiplied by 9.8, the acceleration due to gravity, times sine of the angle of 9.6 degrees and we put, plug that into a calculator we get a value of 4903 newtons so that's the component of the weight acting down the slope question 2 part a 2 the total frictional force acting on a car and caravan is 1800 newtons and for just one mark, we're asked to determine the forward force produced by the car. Remember, the car is travelling up the slope with a constant speed of 4 metres per second, which means the forces are going to be balanced down the way and up the way. So let's take a look at our diagram. That's the diagram we have there. You can see that's the force, the weight parallel to the slope, component of the weight acting down the slope, is 4,903 newtons. And we've also got friction force, which acts in the opposite direction, and that's given a value there as well, which is going to be 1,800 newtons. So the force acting up the slope must be the sum of those two forces to, in order to give the unbalanced force equal to zero. Remember, it's moving at a constant speed, constant velocity up the slope, so the unbalanced force is going to be zero. So what we've got here is all the upward forces up this way, F, should be equal to all the downward forces. And that's going to be 4903 and add on the 1800 due to the friction. Remember, friction acts opposite to the motion, and we're moving up the slope here. So the forward force produced by the car must be the sum of those two, and you get an answer of 6,703 newtons. Question 2 continued, part B. The car and caravan now accelerate uniformly up the slope for 250 seconds to a velocity of 9.5 metres per second. And for two marks, we have to show that the acceleration of the car and caravan is 0.022 metres per second. Well, this is a kinematics problem. We put down our usual kinematics characters, U, V, A, S and T. U is the initial velocity, which we know from the question previously is going to be 4 point zero meters per second we know the final velocity is going to be 9.5 meters per second and we're asked to find what the acceleration is to prove that 0 0.022 we don't know anything about how far and up the slopes so we'll leave that blank and we do know the time is going to be 250 seconds so we have got u we've got v we need to find a we've got t and we can go straight ahead to use the equation acceleration is equal to v minus u over t that's the classic working out of the acceleration so acceleration plug in the numbers v is going to be 9.5 meters per second take away u which will be four meters per second put a bracket around that divided by a time of 250 seconds and therefore we get the acceleration comes out to be precisely 0 0.022 meters per second every second and that's the acceleration of the car and the caravan up the slope now part two says determine the minimum forward force produced by the car while accelerating so let's go back to our diagram again to see what's happening we have got the car like that and we've ascertained that the total force is acting down the way that's the force of friction acting down the way and the component of weight acting down the way come to 6703 newtons 
And this time we have got an unbalanced force acting on the car because that's going to produce the acceleration. And there must be a force up the way, and that force up the way is at value F there. So there's our complete diagram. Now we can find the unbalanced force, but we know that the unbalanced force is always equal to the mass times acceleration. So unbalanced force is going to be equal to mass times acceleration. And we know the combined mass of the car and the caravan and the passengers is 3,000. So we've got 3,000 multiplied by the acceleration, which we just worked out, 0 0.022. 0.022 and that's going to give us the value for the unbalanced force so we work that out we get an unbalanced force of 66 newtons so this is going to be 66 newtons here so you just look at the picture and see what's happening we've got an unbalanced force of 66 newtons so the upward force must be bigger than this force by 66 newtons and we can do the wee sum to make that right we can see that the, all the forces acting for the unbalanced force f u n is going to equal to the forces acting up the way, F. Take away the forces acting down the way, which is 6703. We know we can rearrange now and find out, uh, once we know the unbalanced force, it's 66. That's equal to force minus 6703. And what we can do is we can actually rearrange this. And we have the force acting up the way must be equal to 66 plus 6703 newtons. And that gives us the forward force in order to produce this acceleration has got to be a value. We work it out as 6769 newtons. So the upward force must be 6769 newtons. So that's going to be 6769 newtons here. And you can see that we take 6,769 newtons for the forward force and take away the combined downward forces, 6,703 newtons, we get the unbalanced force of 66 newtons, which produced that acceleration of 0 0.022 metres per second. Now, the last part of that uh, question, it says, state one assumption that you've made in your calculation for B part 2. And the assumption we've got to make is that the frictional forces have remained the same. The component of weight acting down the slope stays the same and we must presume that the friction forces which was we worked out previously but were told that must be the same. And that's the assumption you make. And that's why we're allowed to use that uh, force acting down the combined force acting down the of 6,703 newtons and the assumption was that the friction force has stayed the same. Question 2 continued part C. Later in the journey, the car and caravan are being driven along a straight level road. The car and caravan now accelerate at 0 0.16 metres per second every second. The frictional force acting on the car is 740 newtons and the frictional force acting on the caravan is 1200 newtons. And for three marks, we have to determine the tension in the coupling between the car and caravan. OK, let's take a look at the diagram here of the car and caravan. We'll make it separate so we can fill in all the forces. Now, we know there's going to be a tension force which is going to act between the couplings. That's the tension force acting in there. And we know that the mass of the car is going to be 650 kilograms and the mass of the caravan is going to be 1,530 kilograms. And we do know that they're going to be accelerating at 0 0.16 metres per second every second. Now, because they're coupled together, they'll both have identical accelerations. So this car will be accelerating at 0 0.16 metres per second every second. And, of course, the caravan will also be accelerating at 0 0.16 metres per second. Now, the frictional force acting on the car is going to be 740 newtons so we're going to have a frictional force acting on the car there and the frictional force acting on the caravan is that there like that now when we're doing this type of problem we have got to find the tension in the coupling we know that there's going to be if we look at the, the caravan on its own we can isolate the caravan so what i'm going to do is i'm going to draw a kind of cloud all the way around the caravan and all the way around like that and look at the caravan on its own so what have we got we have got a mass and we have got an acceleration so we can find the unbalanced force so the unbalanced force in this case is going to be equal to the mass times acceleration because remember the caravan doesn't know it's been 
towed by a car, as far as the caravan is concerned, it's this tension force which is pulling it and the friction force pulling it back and it's giving it an acceleration of 0.16 metres per second every second and its mass is 1530 so we can work out the unbalanced force acting on the caravan itself. So it's going to be 1530 multiplied by 0 0.16 and we have got the unbalanced force acting on the caravan and that's going to be 245 newtons 245 newtons acting on the caravan as the unbalanced force but if you look close at the isolated system you can see the force that's going to cause that the unbalanced force is going to be caused by the forward tension so unbalanced force is going to be equal to the forward force from the couple, the tension T, take away this frictional force which is 1200. So we can work out by rearranging that the tension, the coupling, is going to go to the unbalanced force, add on 1200. So we just worked out what the unbalanced force was, it was 245, so the tension of coupling is 245 plus 1200 and therefore the tension acting on that uh, that, that, that connection between the coupling between the car and the caravan must be a total of 1,445 newtons.